Hey guys, Rashad here. So my friend who I used to teach with, he's an incredible pianist. He's a singer. He's a, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a teacher. He's like a manager at a music school in a, he teach where they, where they manage like, I think hundreds of different kinds of employees and they go around schools and they teach people music and stuff, whatever. Anyway, I started my part of my teaching career with him back about 10 years ago and we used to teach together in high school and we used to always talk about teaching methods and help bounce ideas off each other and that kind of thing and lately he was watching my video with Carl and he thought he'd send me this so he looked this up about Ed Sheeran Ed Sheeran shares his secrets to being an artist and for success now there's one part here which he talks about how he actually learned to sing runs specifically they mention it and i thought it'd be really interesting right so you guys can read the rest of the article if you want to look it up but let me show you the part where it's got to do with my 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 method or what i talk about mm. well where is it oh yeah Something here, he says, um, sometimes you lose your voice and sometimes you don't, and you're just unlucky if you do, he says, shrugging. So that's like kind of got to do with a lot of teachers that talk about, oh, once you learn the right way, you like they kind of make it imply that you'll never lose your voice. You'll never have voice troubles again. You'll never have trouble hitting those high notes again. They kind of imply that. So it's sort of like a false thing that they're selling. And uh, Ed isn't my only proof of this but uh this is just an example of a singer who's experienced who's saying you know sometimes you lose your voice sometimes you don't it's partially got to do with i think it's got to do with overuse and it's got to do with like your lifestyle you know how much you use your voice which is overuse the way you use your voice obviously if you're doing things that are very tiring on the voice the voice will get tired quicker than it would if you weren't doing those things and hydration and stuff like that like uh you know food sickness all that kind of stuff air quality like it all affects how your voice feels it's not just about oh i have just haven't learned the right technique so my voice will be perfect all the time so that's one thing i wanted to point out there now he says instead it's more about the practice about the practice a fan of hip-hop and folk music he taught himself to sing by doing craig david or beyonce riffs really slowly it's funny how they compared craig david and beyonce well they both do crazy runs but they're just like two different very different um you know it's like female like high female low male <laughs> it's just funny um and the fact that ed's a guy and he's talking about he's doing beyonce riffs but still anyway doing them really and they call them riffs but i think i think of riffs more as like on instruments when it comes to vocals i call it runs but i don't want to play too much semantics but i call it runs really slowly you can literally quote you can literally teach yourself to sing crazy runs just by slowing them singing them slowly and then faster wow i don't know what it does to your vocal cords but i think it stretches them in a way where you can do more and then they've added stuff he says now i love that now, he doesn't say exactly how he does them slowly now i'm guessing he does them slowly with his good natural ear because if you listen to old recordings of him he was in tune already he might have a good and he was playing guitar pretty beast when he was younger so he might have a good enough ear to pick them up whereas uh, what i've done is I, i've taken that idea to the next level so that you use software like amazing slowdown now which i'll just bring up here and show you so that anyone at any level no matter if you've got a good ear or not can pick up the speed of runs so i've got a free tutorial here on how to use it which i recommend all my students do before they ever get a lesson so that they know how to use it so when they come in the lesson they're ready to go you can loop the parts and then you can uh, slow them down as much as you want instead of just having to use your brain and repeating the part over and over at full speed which is very difficult to pick up runs now we know that ed can do crazy runs for example in thinking out loud he does crazy runs we found love right where we are he does runs like that so honey now 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 we are he does crazy when 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 my hands don't play the strings the same way hands hands 
he does crazy runs like that, right? And he's learned them just by going slowly. So he didn't do scales to build his runs. He just took the songs, broke them down into tiny, into the pieces, broke, worked on the pieces he wanted to, slowed them down, and then gradually went faster. Simple. This my method is entirely based on how naturals like Ed learn. That's what my method is based on. I just evolved the method further so that anyone can do it, not just naturals, with the help of software and with the help of a real life teacher. And yeah, it stretch. He says it stretches your vocal cords. I don't know about stretches, but it definitely helps you be more accurate with the notes that you're trying to get. That's how. That's what I would say. Uh, then he talks about his songwriting, and then they ask him if he warms up here somewhere. He goes, uh, uh, he still doesn't warm up before a concert, saying he was never in such a culture and that it doesn't make a difference to him. I love that. If you look online about warming up, and even if you go to a teacher, uh, depending on the teacher, of course, there's there is a large culture, I will call it, that make you feel like it's a fact that you have to warm up in a particular way. If you look at uh, Eric Arsenal, he's got a video that's got like over a million views showing a professional vocal warm up. Now, I would say Ed Sheeran's a professional vocalist, right? He's got a beautiful falsetto, he's got a pretty high range, he sings really high and thinking out loud, sings like B flats, uh, pretty powerfully I think it is, B flats. And he's got crazy runs. His vibrato is not the best, but it could be... Sometimes he plays guitar and it makes it sound worse when he's doing his vibrato. But generally, and his, his general pitch overall is really good. He does quick flows. He's got a great voice. I would just say probably his vibrato could probably use some work. That's about it. So we've got a high-level singer here that doesn't warm up. He's got a great voice. Sounds great in the studio. Doesn't really have too much effects on his voice. We know he can do it live, plenty of examples. And he doesn't use these professional vocal warm-ups that many of the teachers say that you need to do. So a warm-up can be many things. To me, a warm-up is just using your voice in a slightly easier way than the way that you're intending to. So if you're going to do something really big, like the thinking out loud high notes, um, take me into your love when he does those high notes, <clears throat> If you're going to do those high notes, you probably wouldn't wake up and then sing those high notes straight away. All right. You probably need to sing for a bit before doing that. Now, what I would say is instead of doing a vocal warm up where you do boring ass scales and things like that, what I would do instead is I would just sing the songs in easier keys. So you just sing songs lower, which is what you tend to naturally do anyway. Do you ever wake up and you have a shower and you start singing? Do you ever wake up? And you start maybe talking in the house, talking to your partner, or doing you're talking lightly, right? You're just waking up, your voice is warming up. You warm up with the natural things that you'll do, like talking, and you might just sing lightly and like in a certain way before you get to singing all out. So I'm guessing that that's what he would do. Now, I don't know if he does that for sure. He says he doesn't warm up. I highly doubt that he just doesn't use his voice all day and then sings. It's more likely that he does start to use his voice, but he doesn't warm up in the culture. He's referring to a culture here in quotation marks because I can tell he's responding to the question because the, the person that's asking the question is coming from an assumption that they've been taught from the people that say you need to warm up in such a way. Okay, because they're asking him, what do you do? Like, do you do it like this? Instead of just asking him, the better question would be, what do you do? Do you sing? Do you do anything before you you get to you do your concert? Do you talk? Do you, what do you do? That would be the better question instead of maybe giving the assumption. But it's kind of good because he, he probably knew where she was going with it. But I would ask him further questions to see what he's talking about. But yeah, guys, hope you you can see um, natural singers didn't learn with the ways that were being shown online. They didn't use these methods to learn. They didn't use scale systems. They didn't use um, non-song based methods. They took songs and broke them down. The only difference between them and the singers that never get better using songs is they know how to break the song down because the E might be good enough naturally and that's a gift. 
Okay, so what I've done is taken their method and made it made people that don't have a good ear, that don't have the gift of the good ear, to be able to use the same method that they're doing, slowing down, breaking things into breaking songs into small pieces, taking those methods, except um, now with the software like ASD, Amazing Slow Down, you can break it down as slow as you need to, or with a teacher like me, I can pinpoint for you where you're making the mistake. Whereas when you have a good ear, you don't need someone to tell you where you're making the mistake because you already know because you're gifted enough to tell that you're making a mistake. So you naturally work on the part by yourself, okay? That's why you need to come to a teacher or use a program like Amazing Slowdown to help you identify where you're making mistakes. That's where the naturals didn't need help. That's why by the time they're 20 years old, they're always fantastic singers because they went all these years knowing their mistakes so they could work on them. Whereas people that aren't gifted go for 20 years singing, they don't know their mistakes. So they just keep singing songs as a whole. They never think to break things down because they can't tell they're doing anything wrong. Okay. I used to be one of those people I couldn't tell what I was doing wrong. I hope that guys clarifies for you and uh, gives you a bit more proof, a bit more ideas about my system, a bit more proof from a, a professional singer with a, you know, with pretty much at eight to nine out of 10 vocal ability. <clears throat> He's only missing, I would just say probably his vibrato could be a bit better. You know, incredible singer, that's the way he does it. That's the way my siblings did it, and I watched them growing up. I know they did nothing else because I watched them grow up. This stuff works. You don't need these other things. These other things literally are a distraction and move you away from the goal, which is singing songs amazingly. Okay? I'm Rashid Hayek, rnbsinglessons.com. See you next time. Bye.